the favorite is going to be the five, Safo, who was second with Kent DeSormo riding her back here for Phil D'Amato and closely followed in the wagering by the two, Luminoso. There's one at a, a fairly decent price here, the, the, the top one, number one, trained by Simon Callahan, Dawn Traveller, that's form in Europe is exceptional, ran a really good race behind Clemmy. And I know, Tom, you're quite keen on her running a big race in this. I think, certainly on her European form, hasn't necessarily translated it, but she's a big prize. Yeah, a lot of speed in this race. I think it helps the horses that close. The one, Dawn Traveller, is one of those horses. We head up to Trevor Denman to call the opener here at Del Mar. Dr. Anne is there. Into Glamour comes forward. Sappho will be second last. Breezy B, the last one. Breezy B going out. Well, that. And uh, away they go. In the center, Inter Glamour began well, being joined now by Ladybug in the red cap. On the far side, we have Dr. Anne running up to third. Luminoso's at the rail, and Sappho tucks in right behind them. Dawn Traveller down at the rail. In the jeans is right alongside of Mischievous Lady. They're giving them six length start. The pace is very honest early on. Then we drop back to Time to Play, who's racing back second last, and Breezy B brings up the rear, 10 off them. They head past the three-quarter pole and into Glamour. Out here setting a decent pace. Leads it now by just over a length. Ladybug is a comfortable second, being followed by Dr. Anne in third. Then we come back to Luminoso. Sappho is in the yellow colors, gives them a good six-length start. Behind that, Dawn Traveller in the jeans alongside of them. Time to play, tries to make headway at the rail. It's still a good nine off the leaders, though. And in behind that comes Breezy B. They running into the far turn and Inter Glamour starts to get away a little now. Inter Glamour's opened up to lead it by almost three. Ladybug is tracking from the second spot on the far side as Dr. Anne being chased after them. Luminoso's in with a shot down at the rail and Sappho is moving into contention as well. Then comes in the jeans. They come into the top of the lane. Inter Glamour's hanging on, taken on now by Ladybug on the outside. Sappho was coming with a run on the grandstand side as well. Dr. Anne's in with a shot too. Breezy B is running on from behind. They come for home now and Sappho grabs the lead. Sappho on the outside, shifting in a little, but Sappho in front. Inter Glamour battles back. Sappho into Glamour. Sappho will win it. Sappho one and a half length to Inter Glamour. Luminoso finished third and then Breezy B. Sappho gets the fire first under Kentis Sormo to get the victory here with a lot of happy betters uh, as this one going off favored by post time. Five, four, two, ten unofficially and uh, pretty predictable so far as the race unfolding. Yeah, Desarmo chose to ride the five over the ten horse Breezy B, who he rode both of these last time. He looks like he made the right choice. Good race. Uh, in my opinion, by the four horse into Glamour, who actually almost outbroke the gate, went straight to the front and fought hard all the way to the end. Yeah, I thought the, I thought the winner picked up really well in the end. Because uh, as you say, Tom, into Glamour made a really bold show for it from the front. And, and Sappho had to pick up. Now, did just sort of lug in when asked to go and win her race. But, but ultimately, she picked up in the style of a, of a pretty talented horse. Yeah, and really the only one that kicked home really quickly yeah. in that department. Again, the unofficial winner is the five Sappho, the Irish bred filly by Tia Filo, ridden by Kent Sormo for Phil D'Amato, five, four, two, ten, unofficially. And I don't know that we learn necessarily very much applicable to the racing tomorrow, given the difference in the quality of the competition, but um, you could make a case for it being a pretty even turf course, so far as running styles are concerned, with the horse closing well to win, as uh, expected, but a pace setter who had a pretty easy time of it hanging in there gamely. Yeah, you know, uh, from a trainer standpoint, uh, the one thing, Ollie, that I noticed about the race was that the turf is very firm. I didn't see a lot of kickback uh, from underneath in the ground. We actually had a little bit of rain here this week, so uh, look for a firm turf. Uh, you would think at first blush that maybe that doesn't favor some Europeans, but there are some Europeans that like it firm that are over here for this race. Yeah, Highland Reel and Queen's Trust would be two horses that instantly spring to mind as, as regards to horses that will really relish the, the, the quick ground 
out there. I don't know how much you can read into that race because Inter Glamour seemingly got the fractions pretty accurate in front and Safo was just the best horse able to pick them up and, and horses in behind, as you mentioned, Tom, struggle to really get into it other than the winner. So I don't, know, I don't think that race is a perfect example of, of how the track's going to ride, but what we do know, as Tom says, is it's quick and two horses from Europe to keep an eye on moving forward over the next few days, Queen's Trust and Highland Reel for sure. That's good information. And with William Buick uh, in his first ride here at Del Mar getting a... He actually had a bit of a howler, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, he did save ground early on uh, through there. And uh, 20 to 1 in the morning line, I don't know that we can... Uh <laughs> there was me beforehand saying he's a world-class rider. He didn't have a howler, but what happened was he was... He was last they haven't gone too quick and he's got a wall of horses in front of him he's had to sit and suffer it's one of those hostage to fortune rides that you're going to see but actually it's important to point that out because i think over the next few days the, the, the two things that we're going to need to bear in mind as we always do is the draw is going to be key and pace in the race is going to be key and in that race that was not an unlucky horse because ultimately i don't think she was good enough but it was one of those rides that you just have to sort of put a line through and, and forget about he's a world-class rider we'll see that i'm sure over the next few days but I wouldn't use that as an example of his talent. P part of the opportunity for him, or part of the reason for getting to ride the course, though, no? To, to get that experience get a and bit to... Of a flavor for it, yeah, exactly. Um, I, as I say, I think that that race, you're going to see that. If they, if they stack him up in front, it, it, always, it often happens, especially here at Del Mar. Right. If they stack him up in front, when you get a wall of horses behind you, in front of you, you can't do anything. You just have to sit, take your medicine, and hope you can, hope you can, hope you can get the gaps in time, basically. And our Twin Spires payout sees Sappho returning $6.80 for the victory. Into Glamour, $7.20 to place. And Luminoso rounding out the top three, the exotics as well. Um, pretty much where you would think they would be given the formful nature of the race. Yeah, I think we're going to spend the day talking about how the course is playing. You know, Del Mar over the summer, uh, there was a lot of talk about how the course played there. And they're saying that since they've reopened, yesterday that in the mornings the track has no, seemed to be no, deeper five, and the, the workouts haven't been nearly as quick as they were during the summertime Antio so I, I can assure you that all the connections are paying attention to, to all these preliminary races uh, no matter what level they are to see just how the track is going to play over the next two days. And Desarmo off to a winning start we'll let you cash your tickets regroup and be back in a little bit to set the stage for the second at Del Mar coming up in about 20 minutes. <laughs> 